Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back once again, or for the very first time, to the Farts and Crap Show, where today, as per usual, it's your host, Anjo, here with uh, part one of Armored Core Last Raven, running on a PlayStation 2 Slim. I'm uh, outputting the signal via an HDMI adapter, and uh, that's outputting to 720p, and I am upscaling that to 1080p so we can have these videos at 108060. And uh, yeah, this was uh, made released in 2006 by From Software, uh, published by Age Tech. So it's probably why we haven't seen a re-release. Um, but yeah, it's the first one, uh, the first game at From Software that Miyazaki worked on. And um, yeah, we'll just I'll just shut up while the intro plays. Yeah. Freaking incredible. Uh, yeah, From Software has always been good at uh, making uh, Armored Core uh, FMVs, I guess. That's one way to put it. But anyway, uh, this was the final PlayStation 2 title in the series and uh, came out 10 years before Dark Souls 3. But uh, yeah, you could even like convert your uh, your save data from Armored Core Nexus or Ninebreaker, which is pretty cool. So you could carry over like uh, all your credits and equipment and stuff like that. And uh, to those of you who are unfamiliar with the Armored Core series, I'm going to be taking most of this episode to kind of go over uh, the basics and whatnot, um, because... Uh, I guess one reason why this game never really achieved, uh, well, Armored Core in general never really achieved, like, um, widespread popularity would be, um, 
there's a very high learning curve in this game. Um, just going to turn down the sound effects because they're always too loud. Uh, the music in this game is fantastic, though. And um, turn down the BGM just like slightly because it kind of outputs really loud. Um, and it's 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 a, it's a it's a little bit too much. The sound effects are fine, but like the music is like where it's at in this game. Two turntables and a microphone. Um, <laughs> that's a Beck reference to those of you who don't know that one. Um, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not gonna go into like a full history of like Armored Core or any of that stuff, um, or explain like every single thing that uh uh like mechanic in the game um but we'll we'll get to some of those otherwise this is going to be like at least an hour long video and just like i i don't want to go over like every single detail um this game is incredibly detailed though and uh, it, it was kind of like the the precursor, I guess, for Dark Souls. Um, there's a lot of similarities. Um, and But it's not that different. It feels like a natural evolution, I guess, from Armored Core uh, 1. And um, I've always said, like, Armored Core is basically Dark Souls before Dark Souls, you know? Um, and definitely, like, for theme and, like, um, I guess, like, world design, like, it did start with, like, Kingsfield, and, uh, after that, um, what was the name of that game? Eternal Ring. Um, but as far as, like, narrative and gameplay and, like, uh, game systems and mechanics and stuff yeah it it started here so not in this game but with armored core uh we'll go ahead and accept and we got an intro like oh unmanned suicide weapons ravaged the world corporations that used to fight one another lost everything in the aftermath instead of trying to rebuild individually they joined forces to form alliance the organization got off to a rocky start. Months went by before things were running smoothly. A new world order was ushered in, one ruled by Alliance. But a rebel group known as Vertex vowed to overthrow them. A war between the two groups broke out and quickly escalated into chaos. Combat Mode Oh, we got another cutscene, cool. Now Vertex has issued a declaration. 
Their final attack launches in 24 hours. And yeah, that's kind of a uh, important, I guess, to the narrative of the game, um, and just like how the game works. Uh, so essentially, you start with just like a crap AC, which is what they call the mechs in this game, um, and in Armored Core in general, and the uh, pilots are referred to as ravens. Um, so yeah, present time, it says 8 o'clock, and everything... Actually, I don't think the arena missions... The arena fights? I don't think the arena fights consume time. Um, but every mission you do uh, progresses the time by a certain amount. Um, and there are different, like, kind of allegiances that you can do. Uh, so right off the bat, you have three missions to choose from. Uh, two of which are from Vertex, and one is from Alliance. And, um... In this game of basically corporate espionage, um, they very rarely give you all the information. Um, it's pretty common that the person issuing the mission or the group issuing the mission um, will be not entirely truthful or straight up just lying to you about the details of the mission. Um, although how you complete the mission is um, pretty straightforward most of the time. Um, let's see. And like you get a bunch of like flavor text as you play the game. Like there's a lot of voice acting in the game, but not for a lot of things like the emails and stuff that you get, which, you know, whatever. It, stuff doesn't matter. It's just to give you like a little bit more context, I guess. Um, but yeah, in order to do everything in the game, you have to do like, I think three or four playthroughs, something like that. And um, that will become more apparent after we beat the game for the first time. And since I didn't import any data, we have just like a crap AC. And uh, in previous Armored Core games, initially, a good idea would be to sell everything and just, like, buy new stuff. However, you can't sell your default parts in this game. So, yeah, that's a bit of a downside. Unfortunately, you do start with uh, some, some cash. We start you off with 300,000 uh, credits, which sounds like a lot, but... Uh, AC parts are expensive. Like, some of them get up to, like, easily, like, 150,000 credits. Um, whereas sometimes you can get some cheap stuff for, like, 20, 30,000, something like that. Um, and some of them are pretty good, but pretty basic. Um, for some of the top tier stuff, yeah, you're going to be spending close to, like, 200,000 credits, or it's like really rare uh, pieces of equipment you can only get by completing a mission a certain way, or finding like a hidden item in a level or something. Um, so right off the bat, what I like to do is, and I'll explain what this stuff is here in a bit, because there's a lot of numbers, a lot of different parameters to a ton of different things. And basically the important stats are right there in the bottom right. You got your AP, which is your health, uh, your arm weight, which is how much stuff you can equip that's attached to your core, your arms included, and the weapons the arms are holding. Uh, you got the total leg weight, which is everything equipped uh, above the legs. Um, and uh, the second number there in leg weight is how much weight your legs can hold. So, right now, um, like, the default setup is okay, but uh, as you may notice here, like if we went with, let's say, uh, lighter arms, 
like our max boost speed, that bottom number on the right, bottom right, uh, actually increases. So it's kind of like Dark Souls in that sense, that like your maximum equip load, if you stay under 70%, like you're a little bit faster, you know, the, the lighter you are, uh, ratio to like how much you can hold will determine your mobility basically. Um, and the main factor that determines your mobility would be your legs and your boosters. Uh, certain legs have boosters built into them. And right off the bat, we're going to go with something a bit more mobile and a bit inexpensive. So initially, when starting a brand new game, uh, there's, there's a few things I want to do. And I'm going to go over kind of the general benefits and why and all that stuff, but we're already like 15 minutes in, so um, basically I want to go with lighter weight legs that have better mobility uh, and are pretty inexpensive. I'm going to be going for the cheap options of everything for now uh, because we're going to run out of money real fast. Um, eventually, like my favorite legs in the game as far as bipedal, um, would be the Dingo 2. These things look great, perform great. They are wonderful. Uh, however, they're 127,000. Uh, that's a little too rich for our blood right now, and we don't have a whole lot of blood considering we are a robot. Uh, or we are piloting a robot, but effectively we're a robot. Um, so yeah, the goat legs, very good. Uh, very low energy drain. That is a stat we are going to want to uh, keep a close eye on. Uh, as you can see below the leg weight in the bottom right there, it says EN consumption. That's energy consumption uh, compared to the total amount of power that we have, which is being supplied by our generator. Um, and the generator itself has a bunch of stats and stuff like that, but our default generator is going to be okay for a little bit. So these are only 40000 Very worthwhile investment. Highly recommend. Um, also going to go for the birdie boosters because these are much, much better than our default boosters. Um, and they have a much lower booster heat rating, which is very important. There are a bunch of things that affect um, how cool your AC can stay. Uh, you do have a radiator, uh, you do have uh, a bunch of different components that generate heat and you want to try to mitigate that heat buildup as much as possible because also getting hit increases your overall temperature. Um, we're also going to want to upgrade to a better FCS and I'm going to basically explain this as quickly and effectively as possible. Um, basically an FCS is your targeting computer in a nutshell. Uh, everything has weight and energy drain, that doesn't matter. Verse ECM is basically counteracting, um, uh, it's electronic countermeasure. So, uh, for jamming signals for areas with a lot of, uh, you know, radioactivity or, um, stuff like that, like your AC is not going to perform as it should. So higher ECM is better for those kind of situations. Granted, at first you aren't going to encounter that much ECM stuff, but uh, later on in the game there are going to be situations where you basically want to max this out. Um, but um, yeah, everything else. Uh, we got like lock type, which is just lock on characteristics basically. If your lock type matches your weapons, you're going to be better off. Um, targeting, if you have multiple targets or a single target, it doesn't really matter for most weapons. Single is going to be fine. Uh, maximum lock, that's like the maximum number if you have multi-targeting. Uh, lock time is uh, yeah, the amount of time it takes to acquire a lock on. You want this to be as low as possible. Missile lock time is the same thing, but for missiles. Uh, max capture and average capture basically is your lock-on window. 
Um, and basically you just want these numbers to be big. That's basically it. Uh, max lock range and average lock range is kind of the same thing, but for distance. And parallel sight is kind of important. I'm just going to read what they say here. Uh, select sight and performance value when using a left arm weapon in combination with a right arm or back weapon. The larger the value, the larger the sight lock. So you want this number to be big. Uh, and that's basically it. So the best targeting computer we can get right now that won't break the bank is the Volut 2. Um, it can do multiple targets. That doesn't really matter a whole lot, but it's an improvement on everything except missile lock time. And I don't really use missiles because A, they're pretty expensive, at least at first, um, because you do have to pay for solid shell ammunition. Um, and B, like, uh, they're not effective on a lot of faster enemies and stuff, so it's it's very situational. If you go, like, you can do, like, a full missile loadout, which is very effective for certain enemies. It's basically just, um, oh, careful there, Cupcake. Cat just, like, jumped down and flicked at the mic stand a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it can be very effective, but again, very expensive and very situational. So, just gonna buy this part. Um, and most parts can be tuned. As you can see, that total tuned under the price. Um, however, a lot of parts like weapons and FCS cannot be tuned. So that's why it disappears when you hover over that. Um, a better radiator will be in our near future. I don't know if I want to get it right now. Um, however, I do want to get a left arm rifle because for now, and for a lot of missions, um, just going with dual rifles is actually a very solid strategy. Uh, so a very good, a very solid and expensive one would be the Spectre. Um, and a lot of weapons have a magazine. So as you can see down here for this rifle, it has um, the number of rounds held in the magazine, the mag capacity, and also the mag reload time. So like after you deplete that original magazine, how much time it takes to reload. But um, certain rifles don't have a magazine, so that is quite beneficial. Um, so we'll go ahead and buy the Spectre. And uh, to those of you who saw my Armored Core Nexus playthrough, um, I, I absolutely love that game. In some ways, I kind of prefer it to this one, but there are definite improvements in this game, including this much, much more sensible um, shop menu system. I just like it a lot better because you can easily switch between like buying, selling, and assembly, and it just it makes a lot more sense. Um, right away, I do want to buy... Oh, thank you for not flicking the microphone again. I would have not been uh, super happy about that. Um, the optional part that increases your sight lock, which is this one. And it's only 27,000, so very worthwhile. Um, and we have enough for like one more part, basically, and I don't know if I want to go with a different head or a different radiator. Let's, uh, you have 95k, so I could potentially get, like, two other things. Let's go ahead and see what we got so far. Uh, so yeah, the Spectre, um, yeah, I don't remember if it was in Armored Core Nexus, but, um, you also have the option of hangar units, 
in this game, which basically just means that once your ammo is depleted or you're getting tired of a certain weapon on a side, uh, you can drop the weapon, take out a weapon from the hangar, and then equip that so you have a backup. So it's very, very helpful, especially for longer missions, to have a laser blade weapon in the left hangar, um, because they never run out of ammo. It's one of the few things in the game, actually, I think it's one of the only thing in the game um, that doesn't have a limited amount of ammo. Um, so, and this one sucks, it's really bad. So I might actually buy a better laser blade but we'll, we'll see. Um, and like I said, your default equipment cannot be sold. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and probably tune these up here in a sec. But I want to equip our new stuff first. Uh, better boosters, better FCS. And this generator sucks, like everything else basically sucks. But um, we'll get better versions of things here in a bit. Uh, and the starting rifle is not terrible. To get a better one would be like almost 80,000 credits for the one that I want to get. So we're going to wait on that a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and buy. I want to see the other laser blades, how much they are. And not every laser blade can be used as like a hanger weapon, but um, a lot of them can. The Elf 2 is actually pretty solid because it has a higher damage output and the range on it is a lot better. Uh, the Fujin is actually fantastic because it fires a wave instead of just doing like standard like sword slash. Um, whereas the Raijin has better attack power. The range is like half, but 280 is still quite good. Um, but yeah, since it's 20,000 cheaper, I'll probably go with the Fujin. Which is a massive increase. Um, like over our other one. And we got 45,000 left. Which is not enough to buy the head I wanted to get. Um, however, I believe it is enough to upgrade to the better radiator be the Hazel 2, no it's 47,000 okay this, this is a good one though um, standard Hazel is pretty decent as well um, it's pretty similar in stats and everything else actually you know I'm gonna go ahead and buy this yeah and that'll leave us with 18,000 which is not enough to do anything with we'll go into assembly and hangar unit left, we can store the Fujin in there, which is awesome. And let's go ahead and tune the parts that we can tune. So tuning is free in this game, and you can adjust it later if you want to, which is so helpful, because in Nexus you had to pay for it, and it can get expensive, but um, yeah, basically you can just like tweak certain parameters. Uh, for this head, I'm just going to increase the versus ECM because 173 is terrible. Um, and that's like the only way you can increase versus ECM via tuning, is tuning heads. Uh, the core, I'm probably going to go with cooling since our cooling stat is so low. And the lower the stat is, the more you can actually improve it. Uh, if a stat is already high, you can't really change it all that much but if you're trying to max out a certain thing it can still be worth it um, with the arms aim accuracy probably would be the most valuable that it's only by nine that's not gonna make like any perceivable difference so we go with cooling because cooling is already gonna be a problem uh, with the legs definitely gonna go with max leg weight because that's like the one thing you want to be super high regardless of what legs you have. Uh, the cooling is pretty bad, but we can make up for that with other parts. Uh, the birdie boosters, you're just going to go with boost power because the other 
the weight isn't bad, and the other two stats are already really good. Um, generator, definitely going to go with energy output, so we just have more energy on demand. And with the radiator that we bought... Yeah, the drain, it's similar in stats, but the default cooling is so much better. Um, and I'm just going to boost that even higher, so we're over 10,000. It's over 10,000! Uh, and that's everything we can tune, so I'll just equip the hazel, because I almost forgot to do that. And that should be good for now. Like, this is not a great build, but this is a lot better off than where we were a minute ago, so... Uh, I did equip the FCS, right? Eggs booster, FCS, yeah, 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 okay, cool. And a few things I want to change about the cockpit real quick, because the panel, I hate the default orange, uh, and I want to add heat to the HUD, because it's... It literally doesn't add anything else. If you put on all the additional stuff, it clutters the screen so much. And most of these things aren't that useful. Speedometer, yeah, if you're trying to gauge like your max speed and make like a super mobile um, build, then yeah, for testing purposes, this is helpful. For the rest of the game, I don't care. Um, the color, definitely I'm going to change to either cyan or green. I think the green is the easiest on the eyes. Um, so I'm going to change it to that. And we're just going to change the paint job just a little bit. Because I hate, like the default gray is fine. Um, and you can go with the sample color if you want. I'm going to go with custom color. Uh, we'll go into general. The base, we'll just make it like... Uh, slightly darker, kind of like greenish gray, I suppose. Like that. And then the aid color will make it like an even darker greenish gray. I, I kind of already have an idea here for this. Maybe like, yeah, give it like a little bit of a two tone optional color. I think this is like. Oh wait, no, there are quite a few things are optional, apparently. We'll make this dark, but still like a greenish gray. There we go. And then I, I just want some texturing, you know what I mean? Uh, the details I do want to be like bright green. Uh, bright cyanish green, yeah, there we go. And then, what is this one? The joints? Um, let's just make these even... Like the darkest... Greenish gray. Or is that the same as the optional? You know, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, no, that looks good. I like it. And then we'll go back and then update AC color, yes. Um, and Nexus, if you hit back, I think is in Nexus, I'm pretty sure. Um, it wouldn't give you like a warning or anything, it would just like cancel all the changes you just made. You'd actually have to like confirm or start or something like that. It, it was weird. Um, and if you want, you can even see how all of your things would look with a camo pattern if you want to mix it up, but I like the individual colors of the parts and stuff like that. Uh, right, and you can even make your own emblem if you want to do that. So there's a bunch of samples, just like, yeah, do you want to show your allegiance or something, and blah blah blah, and you can unlock some of them. Like, there's actually quite a few to unlock. Um, however, you can also create your own is kind of cool it's a, it's a very very clunky in a in a remaster I would definitely like to see this idea expanded upon but uh, use edited emblem no uh, we'll just go with a sample emblem actually because I got a good idea here because um, on this first playthrough I definitely want to 
ally with Vertex. Um, because that's essentially what... Uh, how you get some of the secret missions and stuff like that is if you kind of stay consistent with one or the other. Like if you only take Vertex missions or if you only take Allegiance mission, Alliance missions. Um, stuff like that. But, um, and I'm going to give this AC a name because I have a name in mind already. And I kind of want to... Oh, and that's the thing too, is you can make five different loadouts. So, it's pretty sick. And it makes it a little bit easier to manage if you kind of have a theme, a build type for each one and just kind of name it. But, um, plus AC01 is so... It's just boring. Um, but yeah, I'm going to name this one... The Cricket. Yes. Because yeah, I mean, we look a little bug-like. You know what I mean? We got that green coloring going on. It's just, you know, it looks good. I like it. Um... Alright, so let's go ahead and save, because I don't want to have to redo all that. Um, did I rechange the sound stuff? It's going to matter here in a minute. Yeah, I did. Okay. Go ahead and save data to memory card slot 1. And like I said, I am playing this on original hardware. Um, this is my PS2 Slim that's been soft modded, and yeah. Had to replace a lot of things on this unit, uh, including the optical drive getting an HDMI adapter, uh, getting a new AC adapter because the old one was like falling apart, and um, oh, I actually had to get a new controller, so this is a Hyperkin Brave Warrior controller, which if you're in the market for a new PS2 controller from a company that kind of knows what they're doing, Hyperkin is a very solid option. I would like to see PlayStation 2 controllers from other companies that already make controllers I would prefer to use, like 8-Bitto or Retrobit or Hori or PDP, but I, I get it, those guys are busy. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to overwrite these old save files down here because I think I'm running out of room on this memory card. I'm not even sure I can write data to the other one because that's where... Uh, the uh, free McBoot stuff is uh, installed. Pretty sure I can though. And actually, just in case this one gets corrupted, I'm just gonna also write data to the second one. I mean, it very rarely happens, but. It's possible. Um, and at the time of recording this, guys, like, we don't have, um, like, the new PS Plus stuff it hasn't came out yet. Uh, it's coming out in a couple weeks. But they did say PS2 stuff is coming, so I'm hoping we get some PS2 Armored Core games on the service or just added to PSN, because honestly, I'd rather just buy the games individually, but. And they did say that's going to be a thing, where some of the retro stuff is just going to be added to the PS4 and PS5 stores. And I love that. It's finally like Sony getting serious about backwards compatibility. And it's about freaking time. Because yeah, they were on top, but like, the Nintendo Switch is dominating. And uh, they're not really the market leader in the console stuff anymore so I mean they're beating Xbox handily but like yeah the switch is like just kicking their butts so I'm hoping the new PS Plus is good I'm hoping it's really good um, so yeah as a little review here actually we'll go into the missions in the next one uh, the other thing too is like we do have an arena where we can fight other uh, AC pilots, uh, and this game actually does have, I 
think it's in this one? I know it was in Nexus. But I'm pretty sure this game has both split screen and system link um, uh, versus modes. Not co op. That would be incredible. And I hope the new rumored Armored Core game, Armored Core 6, as I'm hoping they call it, they might call it something totally different, but I'm hoping it has co-op online or whatever. I don't care. I just finally want, like, an old-school Armored Core game made with, like, you know, modern from software with, like, online co-op for, like, missions and stuff. That would be so freaking cool. Kind of like how Monster Hunter has done for, like, such a long time. And uh, all that other good stuff. But, yeah, in this game, unfortunately, you have to place a bet. And uh, if you lose, you just lose your bet. Um, so it's not the really easy money-making way that it was in, like, Armored Core 3 and Silent Line and stuff like that so um i'm just gonna wait on that definitely until i have a better build for sure but there's no auto saving in the game it's all manual so um we could just save scum that is a possibility but um yeah i mean we're out of time thankfully i didn't go too far over um initially when i was recording these first couple of episodes uh, like I said before, um, I'm upscaling this from 720 to 1080. Uh, I'm also having to use some image correction because these are very dark games and they don't really output in a very visible way on modern displays. So like even on my TV that I'm playing on right now, like I can... Uh, I kind of I did tweaked it a lot until it kind of looked normal and then I tried to like mimic that um, in like the image correction and stuff so it should look good um, I did quite a few tests in recording and stuff like that um, so we're doing a lot of image processing but I'm hoping it looks good and I hope you guys enjoy the series I really do um, I played this game a long time ago on this channel, and those videos are no longer on... They're, they're gone, because they sucked. They were really bad. And, like, if you guys did watch those, I am so sorry. <laughs> they were just terrible. Um, but I'm much better at this whole, like, recording gameplay thing now, so... Hope you guys really enjoy these. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. So thank you all for being here. Greatly appreciate it. And of course, before we get going, a very special thank you going out to the Farts and Crap Show members, which at the time of recording is just Novalis Draconis. But again, I'm recording these like way ahead of time. So if you guys joined more recently in like more recently than like a couple weeks ago, I will add them to the wall as they come in. But again, I uh, like, yeah, this is less straightforward of a series to make. So I'm making sure these episodes are good to go, like way ahead of time. But um, yeah, but if you want to be awesome like Novalis Draconis, check out the join button down below if you want to support the show more directly and get membership perks and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, till next time, everybody, take care and I hope you all have a wonderful day.